Food and restaurant empires often expand right in front of us on television or in our cities, but sometimes they grow right under our noses. Here in downtown LA, restaurateur Yasmin Sarmadi already has two celebrated locations under her belt, Church and State, an LA staple, and Spring, a newer endeavor she opened with her husband, Chef Tony Esno. We had the opportunity to meet and chat with her at Spring to pick her brain about the business, design, community, and being a woman in this industry. The cuisine that we serve here is very much about, about real food, for lack of a better word. Um, as Tony puts it, it's about going back to the roots of cuisine and of French cooking, which doesn't mean that it's heavy and sauces and rich, which is some, what, what some people might interpret, but it means about it's food that goes from its source to your plate. So in keeping with that, we wanted the space to be as simple and as pure, I guess. Tony's food, while you know, we're talking about the simplicity, is very complex in terms of how it's put together and the evolution of you know, what happens to it until it gets to our being able to enjoy it. Interestingly enough, there was this juxtaposition of simplicity and complexity and we thought that as a restaurant it's important that the complexity be on your plate and not in your chair or in your table we wanted these elements to be beautiful and comfortable but not to be the focus and it feels more modern that way right <laughs> absolutely you know ironically modern and old-fashioned at yeah. the same time So you already have Church and State. This was your second endeavor. So what um, what motivates you to get into the restaurant business? I know your background um, work-wise, but like with such a high failure rate, I mean, what does that like push that someone like you has to just do it? Insanity to some extent, yeah. <laughs> quite <laughs> frankly. Um, so you know, you mentioned my background, mm -hmm. which. Before I opened Church and State, I had worked for a couple of different companies who did private, who were private lenders to the restaurant industry. And through that avenue, I was able to see, and I knew this before as well, the in incredibly high failure rate of restaurants. Having a certain understanding of what others, others who had been my clients or other people who I had seen in this business had done that help them to succeed or didn't, um, I think made me feel that I had enough of an understanding to control some of that. And the rest of it, I had enough of a love for what I was doing that I was willing to take that risk. Mm -hmm. So we're in downtown Los Angeles, and um, Church and State is also in downtown Los Angeles, and this neighborhood has changed so much and embodies, I guess, this American city experience, but specifically what's going on in LA. Can you talk about what, what you saw then, what you saw, what you see now, and that journey of seeing a neighborhood evolve as you open two restaurants? So what I saw then was not an empty palette, but an almost clear palette with some really great elements that could be polished and um, moved around into the right place to make things really interesting. I grew up in LA. Um, I grew up in Claremont and we would come downtown all the time when when we were children to go to the music center for shows and, um, and different things and to shop in the fashion district and, um, and I loved downtown. Uh, I was born in Tehran 
And um, in fact, I was interestingly enough having this conversation with my husband today where we were talking about your initial environment and how that affects you. So Tehran is a major city. I mean, now much more so than it was, you know, 40 some years ago. I always felt very comfortable with that, very drawn to that, and as much as I loved more idyllic landscapes, um, I always kind of missed being in a city. I went to school in New York, I loved that. Um, so when there was this idea of being able to do something downtown and maybe there would be this resurgence and maybe people would want to come back there. To me, honestly, without much thought, it was so instinctual. I thought, yes. Um, Speaking of Los Angeles, um, I think in culture, food, and a lot of things, people don't always celebrate Los Angeles as this like hub for culture, for food, you know, for even architecture. Um, are there things that are valid, you know, things that people say that you find valid, and are there things that people don't really realize about LA that maybe LA is kind of at the forefront of certain things, like little hidden facts about our city? I think it's exciting because there's a lot um, that is allowed here, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that maybe is not on the East Coast because it's more traditional, there are more rules, um, and it's, you know, in some ways a little bit of a free-for-all, which sometimes feels uncomfortable and then sometimes is very exciting, you know, um, I would liken it to modern art. And I think Los Angeles is a place where modern art has thrived. And that's one of the reasons is people are a little bit more open to it. Um, they're not thinking, well, no, this is how it's supposed to be done. And if it's not done this way, then it's not right. Um, so when you, when you allow that and you look at something, maybe you'll go, oh, yeah, I don't really like it. Or maybe you'll go, wow, this is, this is a way I'd never looked at something before. And it's exciting. And I think in some ways that's what LA is. Yeah. You've told me a few anecdotes about being a woman in this industry. Um, is there one specific experience or story that you can tell that kind of has embodied, you know, that dynamic for you? Wow. Um, yes. When I opened Church and State, I opened with a partner, and he was male and very, you know, kind of macho. I learned that it was not his intention at all to maintain the partnership, that it was about having used my strengths to do what he needed and then brushing me aside. Um, and that was, I, I was sort of shocked because I had never, I hadn't grown up in that sort of environment, I hadn't had those experiences. Um, and so it, it, it was, something and I'm, I'm a very determined person <laughs> so it was something that really bolstered my determination to succeed at what I was doing even more um, and I thought well absolutely not yeah that's that's not what's gonna happen <laughs> if that's what you think you're the one who's not gonna be around for this so he was in for the shock Absolutely. In the end. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that really was was around the male female dynamic mm -hmm. more than anything else, more than my lack of experience in this business or anything else. I think it was, um, you know, certain people perceive men or women as strong or weak, and I think in that instance it was about. I'm a man, I can do what I want, mm -hmm. and certainly in relation to a woman who has no experience, this will be very easy. Um, so it became very much my goal <laughs> to, to make sure that didn't happen. Um, oh, major motivation. <laughs> um, I like what you said about being from Tehran, like informing so much of who you are, you know, the environment that you come from. Um, can you talk about, and this is, this is a big answer, but um, what food means to you? Oh my gosh, food is life. Yeah. I mean, food is literally life, right? We wouldn't have life without food. Um, but in that culture, and I'm sure you understand this, being Lebanese as well, is everything moves around food. Um, and not in, an, not in an essential we must eat to survive way, but in an essential we must get together to eat to 
be, you know, to be together, to thrive as a culture way. I mean, what amazes me is it's, it's something that, like you said, we have to do for sustenance, but I feel like it, it's so layered because of that, right? So if I cook for you, if I provide for you, I'm keeping you alive in a basic sense, but it expands into I'm expressing myself or I'm caring for you or Absolutely. we're bringing family together or we're telling stories, you know? Um, so with that, I wanted to ask you what your first memory of food is. Oh, or one gosh. of your first. That's so interesting. I've never thought about that and I've never been asked that question. Um, I'm not sure, but I just, I just think about family. And, and in particular, my mother's family. I'm not sure why. I think because I loved my grandmother's cooking. It was so good. And there were so many happy and fond moments around food and around, you know, uh, that sort of gathering and, and that. And a lot of times, it wasn't a table. I was going to say a table. It was what we call a souffre or a cloth that's spread on the ground and you know the plates are arranged on there and you sit around it um, and this is a very sort of traditional thing which my mother's family actually was not but somehow this this particular thing would happen um, and and that's a really really fond memory for me that's beautiful